Well, my last couple of videos were a little TMI and uh, everybody survived. So I'm gonna go ahead with what I'm doing, with what I've been thinking about doing. Welcome back to Far From Eden. If you're new here, hi, welcome. Everybody, please hit the like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and share this with your friends and family. <laughs> I laugh because it's hard to talk about these things with friends and family, which is part of the reason we're all here. So it's Sunday night and I have been toying around with the idea of doing something, but it's sort of against my nature, but I think it, it might be a little helpful and provide some insight to why I'm a weirdo and think these things and understand these things. And, uh, and also it, it might help some of the men who are raising daughters. Uh, I don't know. Either way, I'm just gonna throw it out there and it is what it is. So I'm gonna share um, stories from my childhood that seem apropos to the types of things we talk about. When we talk about um, the state of, of, that men are in in today's society, when we talk about how destructive um, womanism has been, uh, all those things that we talk about. So I was kind of like, well, now where do I start? Obviously there's a few in my mind that I've kind of thought, hmm, that's, that might be something. And I might have shared this in another video, I'm not sure, because I don't really plan exactly what I'm gonna say. So it, it might be, I might have briefly mentioned it in another video. But this is a time that I remember very clearly my dad having a stern conversation with me. A loving conversation, but very stern. I wish for the life of me I knew what brought it up. Usually I'm pretty good at remembering like, well, who said this and exactly what did they say, etc., etc. But for some reason I can't remember what happened that spurred him to say this. But I could take you to the exact spot in the living room. So it's clear as can be. He said, I don't want you to grow up to be a man hater. I was 12, I, I remember that. And he said, I don't want you to grow up to be a man hater. And I remember feeling like indignant, which I often did at age 12. I was quite, I was like 12 going on 15 with my attitude. Um, probably wasn't as bad as I think it was, but my parents let me know it was bad. So he said that and I was indignant and I was like, why would you say that? I'm not a man hater. I wouldn't be a man hater. You know, so I argued with him and he, he continued to express that it was a great concern for him. And then he asked me to think about my mother's side of the family, not just my mother's side, but my mother's mother's side the side that she had like sort of grown up more culturally aligned with. And I said, yeah, he said, where, where are the men? And I sat there and I was like, think about one aunt. I'm like, no, there's no husband there. Think about my other aunt. Nope. There's not a husband there right now. I think about my grandmother. She's obviously divorced and remarried, which is kind of rare for back then, you know, divorce anyway. So I just was dumbfounded because I thought that's so weird. Like I don't have any uncles. Like I do not have uncles now. They'd been married before, you know, or together with a baby daddy, but there were no men. And so I started to think maybe I don't know everything and I, I I was I think I asked him why and my dad said because they've been run off and again I had to think you know you're like replaying people like wait and I couldn't argue with him I couldn't argue I knew those women were disagreeable unpleasant, 
masculine energy. Um, there was a level of promiscuity in that side of the family. Uh, and I, yeah, they've, they've been run off. And also, now I know, like, and they also didn't pick the best and because of their choices didn't have access to the best. So, which is still a result of their choices. And that stuck with me, that whole conversation. He didn't go into a lot of detail. He didn't go into, well, how have they been run off and whatever, just about like, they're not very, they're not sweet people. Like they're not soft and cuddly and you know what I mean? Those, these are, I, I, I don't want to bad mouth my family, but it's a, you know, it's a, they're a result of, of womanism, you know, and the sexual liberation just, uh, it just affected it. And it wasn't just that, but it was their whole attitude towards men. And I remember snide remarks and things about men, you know, from like when we visited, you know, just, just little things like, oh, probably invented by a man, you know, stuff like that, like pantyhose or something. Uh, well, it's invented by a man, you know, because they're difficult to pull up. And it's like, well, yeah, but you should be thanking him because, but yeah, they, like just remarks like that. It stuck with me. I always wanted and still do want to please my dad. He probably, he might think I got a funny way of showing it, but that's another story. That was, that was another story. That'll be another story, not quite a childhood story, but I love my dad and I always want to please him. And it stuck with me. So the only times over the years that I would have said something bad about men or thought something, was literally the propaganda and the ignorance, and I didn't even know that that's what I was doing. And I'm not looking for excuses. What I want to do is take what I remember learning, being indoctrinated with, and I want to compare that to reality. And I want to, it's not like I was raised Amish and I've just always thought this way and, and believed these things. I, I've not. You know, I used to call myself a feminist when I was in high school. I used to call myself that. And I thought, well, you know, women can do everything men can do. I thought that stuff. It's ridiculous. But I, I did. Like, I'm not, and I'm not a dumb person, but that is how strong the propaganda is. I know exactly what the propaganda is, how it works. And I did wake up out of it. So my hope is and it might be ridiculously optimistic, but my hope is that I can say something here, say something there, and a, a woman might hear it. She might actually be able to hear it. Like the other day with the lady at the doctor's office, my uh, video, my last video, you know, I, I was shocked that she was aware of the situation that men are in in this country. But yeah. So my dad said that to me. The other um, notable thing I think about this story that might be good for dads to hear, my parents were together, but my mother kind of alienated my dad while they were together, undermining, you know, I think that goes on a lot. Obviously she had a strong influence on me. She was the dominant one. But it didn't break, it, it can't break the natural relationship between a daughter and her father. There's something there just naturally. And I probably, to him, he probably thought, well, she argued a lot in the beginning and I'm not quite sure she got it. He might think that. 
He might have thought that, I don't know that he remembers now, but he might have thought that after that. But little does he know, little did he know, that I remembered that. And he would be right. I didn't quite know what, what all it meant, but he said it at the right time. He said it before I could get there. He said it before I could turn into that. So uh, he had to say it when I didn't really fully understand, you know, everything that he meant by that and, and all the damage that was done with not having fathers, not having husbands. And I mean, I, I still learn more and more every day how far back this goes, the various types of propaganda, how it's affected us, how it's affecting the different generations, and how much of a crisis the men are in right now, especially age 35 to 55. It's a huge crisis. If you if you know a guy that's in that age bracket and is married, it doesn't have to be married. No, any anything, not married, single, they're almost all in a crisis. And uh, so I think some of the things that I remember growing up as a girl, learning and seeing, might be, at the very least, a little interesting. So I'm gonna share. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining me and again please hit like subscribe and share and i will talk to you guys on the next one take care of yourselves